The year 331 BC, the place Gaugamela, Mesopotamia, two massive armies faced each other on a dusty plain. The fate of empires hung in the balance. On one side stood Darius III, King of Persia, commanding a vast host of warriors drawn from the far corners of his empire. On the other, a young Macedonian king, barely past his twenties, prepared to challenge the might of Persia. His name was Alexander, and history would remember him as Alexander the Great. The air crackled with tension. The clash of steel, the thunder of hooves, the screams of the fallen, this was the symphony of war. Alexander mounted on his war horse Bucephalus was a force of nature. His strategic brilliance and unwavering courage inspired his troops. They would follow him to the ends of the earth and beyond. The Battle of Gogamela was a decisive victory for Alexander. It shattered the Persian Empire and cemented his reputation as a military genius. But this was just one chapter in the epic saga of Alexander the Great, a tale of ambition, conquest, and a legacy that would echo through the ages. Born in Pella, the capital of Macedon, in 356 BC, Alexander was destined for greatness. His father was King Philip II, a shrewd and ambitious ruler who dreamed of conquering the Persian Empire. His mother was Olympias, a woman of fierce pride and even fiercer ambition. From his earliest days, Alexander was groomed for leadership. He received a rigorous education from the renowned philosopher Aristotle. The young prince studied philosophy, literature, politics, and warfare. Aristotle instilled in him a love of knowledge and a thirst for adventure. He taught Alexander to think strategically, to lead with courage, and to embrace the unknown. Alexander's potential was evident from a young age. He was said to have tamed the wild horse Bucephalus, a feat that impressed even his battle-hardened father. He showed a natural talent for military strategy, a keen intellect, and a charisma that drew men to his side. The young prince was ready to claim his destiny. At the age of 20, tragedy struck. King Philip II was assassinated, leaving a power vacuum in Macedon. Alexander, with his mother's unwavering support, swiftly seized control. He ruthlessly eliminated any rivals and consolidated his power base. The young king was determined to fulfill his father's dream of conquering Persia. One of his first acts as king was to deal with the rebellion in Thebes. He made an example of the city, raising it to the ground and selling its inhabitants into slavery. This brutal display of force sent a clear message to any potential challengers. Alexander would tolerate no dissent. With his kingdom secure, Alexander turned his attention eastward. He was ready to lead his armies across the Hellespont and into the heart of the Persian Empire. The legend of Alexander the Great was about to be written in blood and conquest. Alexander inherited from his father a well-trained and disciplined army. The core of this force was the Macedonian phalanx, a formidable formation of heavily armed infantrymen. They wielded long pikes called sarissas, creating a wall of steel that was nearly impenetrable. Supporting the phalanx were the Companion Cavalry, an elite unit of noble horsemen who served as Alexander's personal guard and shock troops. They were renowned for their speed, maneuverability, and devastating charges. Alexander also employed light infantry, archers, and siege engines to great effect. His army was a well-oiled machine capable of swift marches and decisive victories. Alexander's genius lay in his ability to use each unit to its full potential, coordinating their movements with precision and timing. He was a master of logistics, ensuring his troops were supplied even on long campaigns. His military machine was poised to carve a path of conquest across the ancient world. In 334 BC, Alexander led his army across the Hellespont, the narrow strait that separates Europe from Asia. This was no mere invasion, it was the beginning of a crusade. Alexander saw himself as a liberator, freeing the Greek city-states of Ionia from Persian rule. His first major engagement was the Battle of Granicus River. Facing a larger Persian force, Alexander led a daring cavalry charge across the river, shattering the enemy lines. This victory sent shockwaves through the Persian Empire. The young Macedonian king was not to be underestimated. He continued his advance southward, liberating city after city. His reputation as a brilliant military commander and a just ruler preceded him. Many cities welcomed him as a liberator, opening their gates without resistance. The Persian Empire, once thought invincible, began to crumble before Alexander's relentless advance. In 333 BC, 
Alexander's army clashed with the main Persian force led by Darius III himself at Issus, a narrow coastal plain. Despite being outnumbered Alexander once again demonstrated his tactical genius. He led a surprise attack on the Persian center aiming directly for Darius. The Persian king, caught off guard and fearing for his life, fled the battlefield. His flight demoralized the Persian army, leading to a rout. The Battle of Issus was a crushing defeat for the Persians. It left Alexander in control of Anatolia and opened the way for his advance into the heart of the Persian Empire. Darius, humiliated and desperate, sued for peace, offering Alexander his daughter's hand in marriage and all the land west of the Euphrates River. Alexander refused, he would accept nothing less than unconditional surrender. After Issus, Alexander turned his attention south, conquering Tyre and Gaza in sieges that tested his army's limits. He then entered Egypt, a land steeped in ancient history and mystery. The Egyptians, weary of Persian rule, welcomed him as a liberator. In a gesture that demonstrated his political acumen, Alexander visited the Oracle of Amun at Siwa Oasis. The Oracle, it is said, declared him the son of Zeus Ammon, a claim that further solidified his image as a divine ruler. On the shores of the Mediterranean, Alexander founded the city that would bear his name, Alexandria. This city, strategically located at the crossroads of trade routes, would become a center of learning, culture and commerce, a testament to Alexander's vision and legacy. Section 8. The Final Showdown, Gaugamela and the Fall of the Persian Empire. In 331 BC, the two armies finally met at Gaugamela, a vast plain near the Tigris River. Darius had assembled a massive army, drawing troops from all corners of his empire. He was determined to crush Alexander and reclaim his lost glory. The battle raged for hours, Persian chariots thundered across the battlefield, scythes whirling, waves of Persian infantry crashed against the Macedonian lines. But Alexander, with his customary brilliance, outmaneuvered and outfought his opponent. He led a decisive charge that broke the Persian center, once again sending Darius fleeing for his life. The Battle of Gaugamela marked the end of the Persian Empire. Darius was later murdered by his own men, leaving Alexander the undisputed master of Persia. He had achieved in a few short years what his father had only dreamed of. Section 9. To the Ends of the Earth. Alexander's March Through Asia. With the Persian Empire in ruins, Alexander continued his eastward march. He conquered Babylon, Susa, and Persepolis, the heart of the Persian Empire. He amassed vast wealth and treasures, but his ambition burned brighter than ever. He would not rest until he had reached the ends of the known world. His army, exhausted but loyal, followed him across the Hindu Kush mountains into India. There they faced the formidable forces of King Porus at the Battle of the Hydaspes River. It was a hard-fought victory for Alexander but it came at a cost. His men, weary of endless campaigning, yearned for home. Reluctantly, Alexander agreed to turn back. He had pushed his army to the limits of endurance. They had marched thousands of miles, fought countless battles, and conquered vast territories. But the world was vast, and Alexander's thirst for knowledge and conquest remained unquenched. Section 10. Legacy of a Conqueror. Alexander's Impact on the World Alexander the Great died in Babylon in 323 BC at the age of 32. The cause of his death remains a mystery, but his legacy is undeniable. He was a military genius, a charismatic leader and a visionary who changed the course of history. His conquests led to the rise of the Hellenistic Age, a period of cultural exchange between Greece and the East. Greek language, art and philosophy spread throughout Alexander's vast empire, influencing the development of these regions for centuries to come. Alexander founded numerous cities, many of which became centers of learning and commerce. He encouraged trade and cultural exchange fostering a more interconnected world. His reign marked a turning point in ancient history, bridging the East and the West in ways that had never been seen before. Section 11. An Unquenchable Thirst. Reflections on a Life Cut Short. Alexander's life was a whirlwind of conquest, exploration and cultural fusion. He was a man of contradictions, a ruthless conqueror who wept for the fallen, a visionary leader haunted by demons of his own making. His ambition knew no bounds, yet his life was tragically cut short. What might he have achieved had he lived longer? What new worlds might he have conquered? What knowledge might he have unearthed? These questions tantalize historians and ignite the imaginations of dreamers. Alexander the Great's life may have been brief, 
but his impact on history was profound. He remains one of the most fascinating and enigmatic figures of the ancient world, a testament to the enduring power of ambition, leadership and the human thirst for the unknown.